Hi, I'm Alyssa Cobb. Come fly with AOPA. This week, we bring you some good news from the FAA for pilots who have a history of ADHD. We open our flight training scholarship program and share tips for a successful application and take you flying in beautiful San Juan, Puerto Rico. AOPA keeps flying safe, accessible, and fun by protecting your freedom to fly. We are the most trusted one-stop resource for all things related to general aviation. Become an AOPA pilot today. Here's some good news for many pilots who have a history of ADHD. The FAA is now allowing aviation medical examiners to issue medical certificates to pilots who have uh, certain histories of ADHD diagnosis or medication usage. Now, in order to fall under this new guidance and have the AME issue you your medical certificate, you have to meet these criteria. So no treatment or use of ADHD medications for any reason in the past four years, no symptoms in the past four years, and detailed records showing no instability in social, occupational, or educational academic functioning, and also uh, no other psychiatric conditions or diagnoses. Now, if you don't meet those criteria, your AME will have to still send your medical uh, application off to the FAA for evaluation. Uh, and you may have to go through extensive testing that comes with that. However, this is a great first step um, for mental health and medical certification for lots of pilots who have a history of ADHD. AOPA has been a huge proponent of medical reform for years and years, and that includes ADHD medical reform. Now, if you are an AOPA member and you're wondering how this new guidance affects you, just call our medical certification specialists and talk it through. You can reach them at 800-USA-AOPA. Now, if you are interested in learning to fly or earning a new certificate or rating or even getting into aviation maintenance, AOPA can help. We just opened the 2024 AOPA Foundation Scholarship Program and we're gonna be giving awards ranging from $2,500 to $14,000. We're gonna give away more than a million dollars in scholarships. Now the application deadline is February 9th and we're gonna drop a link to the application information in the description below. Now just don't wait until February 8th to start your application. Really um, put everything into that. And also check out these tips from scholarship applicant winner Ian Miao, he shares tips on how you can stand out from the rest. My name is Ian Miao and I am from Germantown, Maryland. I am a high schooler, he's currently 17 years old, and I recently received an AOPA scholarship for my private pilot's license. I've always wanted to fly from a very young age after meeting a pilot who happened to be on his retirement flight and he gave me his wings. From that day on, it has always been my dream and passion to be a pilot no matter what it takes. In the future, I want to work towards being a commercial pilot. Regardless of what plane it may be, I just want to fly. Being able to have this license in high school, it allows me to teach other people how to also walk down this path of being a pilot. Ultimately, at the end of my career as a pilot, I hope to be able to teach other people who were in the same position as me on how to become a pilot and what the steps are to take. So I followed the steps and got my written exam done to well, increase my chances of getting the scholarship and eventually hoping to get my private pilot's license. I never got the scholarship last year when I applied after I did my written ex exam, which was a big detriment to my motivation, but I pushed forwards. The next year I applied for so many scholarships. I applied for eight or nine. I got declined from all of them except for this AOPA one. So this means a lot to me and it shows that all the work that I put in really paid off at the end. I think some advice I would give to people who are looking for a scholarship for their private pilot's license would definitely be working towards achieving their written exam, completing that, getting as high of a score as possible. But not only that, but they also have to show leadership potential in their resume. I think Civil Air Patrol is a, is a great way to earn leadership experience. It has taught me a lot. Same with being a club founder. I think that has also helped me. I am the founder and creator of Engineering Club at my school. I think that has taught me a lot about engineering, about 
how to lead and how to talk to other people. Because without it, I don't think I would be where I am today. Currently, I have taken lessons almost daily for the past two weeks, but the first week, the weather was not very kind to me, so I was not able to go up that many times. Last week, however, I made a lot of progress, and I am about, I am around six hours right now, and working towards my solo. I think a dream place for me to fly would be a place that you definitely cannot get to by any means of transportation outside aviation because that is what aviation has brought to this world, to be able to go places where you never could have before. So maybe a place like the Bahamas, you can't really drive there, you gotta, you gotta take a plane. Well, congratulations, Ian, and way to persevere applying for multiple scholarships and even applying for them again and again. Sounds like you're already off to a great start in your training. Best of luck to you. Well, here's some more good news from the AOPA Foundation's You Can Fly program. Our high school aviation STEM curriculum is in more than 400 schools, and Oklahoma is leading the way. They have 87 schools using the curriculum. Now, our aviation STEM curriculum features two pathways, professional pilot and drones, and it's for grades 9 through 12. The AOPA Air Safety Institute has released episode number 5 in its popular Beyond Proficient IFR series. They created that series in collaboration with Flight Insight. Now, this episode will help you learn how to safely navigate around adverse weather. You'll learn how to leverage all available weather resources in flight to help paint a more accurate picture for yourself. And it's resources like onboard radar, data link, NextRad weather, flight service, pilot reports, and ATC. You can watch the full episode on the AOPA Air Safety Institute's YouTube channel. Just click on the card in the upper right of your screen. Well, some sad news. Singer, songwriter, and longtime pilot Jimmy Buffett died September 1st at his home uh, in New York's Long Island. Now, he had many type ratings, and he owned a restored Grumman Albatross that is on display at the Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville restaurant in Orlando, Florida. And he also owned a Cessna Caravan on floats and a 1939 Grumman Goose. Now, he kept his airplanes at the Palm Beach International Airport, and the Buffett One departure was named after him. Jimmy Buffett was 76 years old. Well, now I'd like to introduce you to Terry Hall, a woman whose passion for aviation just has compelled her to teach others how to fly, to fly professionally for net jets and own and actively fly a Cessna 140, an advanced aircraft RV-6, without ever getting tired of it. I have a Cessna 140 that I bought from the first person that I instructed for, and I bought that in November 91. So I'm coming up on, on uh, 32 years ownership of a Cessna 140, and I own a, an RV6 that was certified in 2010, and I've owned that for seven and a half years now. But I've gotten to fly some other things with, with other people and experience quite a, quite a wide variety of aircraft, especially tailwheel airplanes on my off time. That's, that's the most fun. I love when you, when you take off and you climb out that you can leave everything else on the ground because now you're focused on just enjoying the flying and trying to do it right and enjoying the view but up there it's just you have a sense of freedom it starts out as a fun thing to do if it becomes a passion don't stop at just a job don't let it be just a job let it be part of your life and remember to have fun with it if I go to work, I'll fly with someone and, and sometimes they'll say, I just don't see why you'd want to do this on your off time. Well, it's just become a job to them. Um, I, I can't wrap my brain around that. That passion is what makes it worth pursuing. Um, is it a good job? Sure. But if you, if you quit having fun with it, then it's no different than sitting in a cubicle anywhere else. Terry, thanks for sharing the passion for aviation with so many and keep up the great work. Well, finally this week, we whisk you away to beautiful San Juan, Puerto Rico.
It's a long haul from Florida to Puerto Rico, but it's a beautiful destination. We stopped in in San Juan on our trip gathering content for AOPA's island guides. AOPA editor-at-large Dave Hirschman flew a beach baron all the way from Florida to San Juan, landing on runway 9 at Isla Grande Airport. It's the busiest GA airport in Puerto Rico. Runway 9 is straight ahead and well marked, but keep an eye out for boat traffic and birds on final. For tips about flying around Puerto Rico, check out Dave's article in the October issue of AOPA Pilot Magazine. When you land at Isla Grande, the staff at Modern Aviation is warm and welcoming. Hi, my name is Carlos Diaz. I'm the CSR manager here for Modern Aviation down here in Puerto Rico. Welcome to Puerto Rico, guys. Welcome to Old San Juan. It's just a few minutes from the airport and you can take a day walking around this part of the city and really get a good glimpse of Puerto Rican history and culture. To get a lay of the land, you can head up to Castillo San Cristobal. It's considered the largest fortress built in the Americas, made to protect San Juan from attack. Life is lively in the city of Old San Juan. There's no shortage of colorful architecture and good food. One of San Juan's claims to fame is to say the pina colada was invented here. Barachina restaurant claims to be the first, and it's worth a stop in for a cool, refreshing drink. There's no shortage of historic beauty around San Juan. You can take a stroll outside the walls to take in the waterfront and see the iconic main entry to the city from the Spanish colonial era. Towards the end of the day, I meet up with AOPA senior photographer Chris Rose and we talk about our experience in Old San Juan. Okay, Chris, so we're overlooking Old San Juan. Uh, we've seen a lot of cool things today. What yeah, we have sure you, have. What's been your favorite things we've seen? Well, you know, like I, this morning I got up and I we, we went out here and there was this great thunderstorm that kind of passed through and the sky was just amazing. The ocean was sort of raging this morning and uh, it just made for some really interesting pictures, but it's a great city. I really, really, really like it. Yeah, and it's only a few minutes from the airport, so it definitely seems like it's worth the time to, you know, land here and just spend half a day or so walking around the old old San Juan. It's a really cool place. Yeah, so. great, great food, uh, you know, great friendly people. Uh, most of the people that I've encountered um, spoke English if you, if you don't speak Spanish, so um, it was easy to get around. Uh, Uber and Lyft is in full effect here, so we've been getting around that way, and uh, yeah, it's gone really well. Yeah. Cool. All right, time to head to the airport. Oh, yeah. <laughs> As we take off from Isla Grande again, Dave asks for a low pass over the runway. It gives us one more look at this beautiful place and the chance to see the other huge Spanish fort from the air. From here, it's on to St. Thomas. I hope to return to this amazing place again soon. Well, I don't know about you, but I just found another destination to add to my bucket list. I hope you enjoyed this week's show. Be sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all of our latest videos. And we leave you with some spectacular footage from our very own senior videographer, Josh Cochran, flying from Puerto Rico, a short hop over to St. Thomas. He was along with AOPA editor-at-large, Dave Hirschman, and director of photography, Chris Rose. Be sure to send in your favorite flying videos. We'll drop a link in the description below. And if you're not already an AOPA pilot, we'd love for you to join us. Just click the link at the end of this video to learn more about our trial membership. We'll see you next week.